Now let's prepare our Excel file and store it in somewhere online to be able to access with Power Apps. As I'm showing here, we could store the Excel file in a document library in SharePoint or in a OneDrive location. For OneDrive, we have OneDrive for business, that if you are for a company, you, can, you have it, or a personal OneDrive account. So we could, you could store in both of them. Uh, when we are going to connect, it's a little different, but I'm going to show in the app where you should go. And in our case, I'm going to store in a OneDrive for Business account. Since I have my business account in here and I have the OneDrive for Business. But you could put in any of those, it will work the very same way. Now let's see how to prepare our Excel file. Since I'm going to use OneDrive, I'm here in Power Apps and I'm going to click here in this icon and I can see OneDrive right here. So I'm going to click on OneDrive and it will open my OneDrive account. Here I have the My Files icon, My Files menu item, and I'm going to create a folder here to put the Excel file inside. So here let's click on New, create a new folder, and I'm going to name this folder as course files okay i'm going to click on create this video is sponsored by the support of my subscribers who like and comment on the videos this class is part of a full course i have on udemy where i teach beginners how to build their first apps so if you want to ensure lifetime access and see the entire course i suggest you to join me on udemy if the course isn't for you, that's okay, but I kindly ask you to show your support by liking this video and subscribe to this channel. Your engagement means a lot to me and motivates me to continue creating valuable content like this. Now, let's get back to the class and continue learning together. And I'm going to enter in the folder. Once I'm inside the folder, I'm going to create a new Excel workbook. So I'm creating, it will open here. And I'm going to start creating my data table right here. Let's see about our documentation. What's the data structure? So I'm going to call the data TB contacts, and I will have these columns, name, phone, department, email, and comments. So let's go back to Excel and let's start typing the columns. Name, phone, email, departments, and comments. Now I can put just some sample data here. Uh, I advise to have some sample data when starting the app because it's way easier to see the first data in there and to see how the app behaves with data. If it's empty, sometimes it's not easy to understand what's going on. So let's put some data. I will put the first one here, then I will paste others that I have already created and I will leave this spreadsheet in the contents, the description where you can download and also use this spreadsheet if you want to copy the same structure or even put the very same spreadsheet in the Excel folder and use it as it is. But it's better if you create from scratch so you practice. Let's say here our contact, the first one, it's me. So Rudimar, phone, let's just put a generic number here. departments developments and comments dev I will use comments just to store what the user is because I have a list of users that are superheroes so in the name I will put the, the real name and in the comment I will put the superhero name so I will use comments to do that but you could use for anything you want Okay, now I have my lists and I will paste in here. Okay, I just have the list here in this in Excel spreadsheet. I copied and I'm going to paste now, Ctrl V. So here's the list of users that I pre-populated my file. Okay, I just forgot to put my email right here. Let's let me do my at Now that we have the table created, we need to format this as a table in order for Power Apps to identify. 
we can note here that once I have it clicked, it's selected at any point, I don't see that's a table. And now we are going to format as a table and see the difference. So I'm going to select the full interval and go here to home, format as a table, and then choose one of the designs. Any one of them work. So let me get just this first one. I'll tell that my tables has headers because it has the first line are, is the header. So I'm going to click on OK. Now it became a table. We can see by the filters here in the top, that's a table. And once we have any of the lines selected, any of the cells selected, we see that we have this table design tab here. If we click in this table design tab, we see that the table has a name and it's called table one. Let's rename it to TB contact as I put here in the documentation. So I'm going to type here TB underscore contact. And this is the name that will appear inside our apps once we connect. If I have left table one, it would be difficult to know what that table means in the future once I'm editing or once I'm maintaining the app. So it's very important to give meaningful names to the tables. Okay, now the table is prepared and we can connect Power Apps to this table to start using it. As the last step, let's just rename the file because right now it's called book. But if I click here, I can rename, for example, to app data file, for example, just to give some meaningful name. Right, now it's prepared and in, in the next class, we are going to see how to connect Power Apps to this spreadsheet so we can start visualizing this data inside Power Apps and also building our app. See you there.